Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash pro revenge. In today's episode, client tried to screw me by locking me out of my own system. Bully my brother? Guess you won't know who blew up the toilet. Stealing from locker, enjoy your trophy. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Client tried to screw me by locking me out of my own system. I've worked as an independent contractor in the IT field for over 20 years, doing all manner of things from creating simple HTML sites to managing a big hotel's complete IT infrastructure. One of the many clients I had back in the day, I was coding biggish custom websites was a rental company. Now I had heard a lot of warnings about not working with this guy that owned it. He had a reputation that he was sharp as a tack, backstabbing and conniving. He was a lawyer after all. So, I went into the partnership with that in mind. He wanted a new website for his renting gig, where people would list their home for rent, renters would sign up and pay a subscription to the site, and he would get the whole lot nothing out of the ordinary there. So we make a pretty good deal on paper, we sign it, and I get started on the project. Coding everything in PHP goes well, but he demands suddenly that I show him progress only a week into the progress. He wants to see the website front now. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I tried explaining to him that the front-end work isn't scheduled to start until after six weeks of back-end programming and that I only had pure code to show right now, the contract we signed clearly states this. He then gets on his high horse and demands that I put everything on hold to do the front-end first, design, and then program. I, being really young at the time and fairly naive, agree to this without asking for it to be added to the contract as an addendum and start working on the design now. Now, the contract stated that I was given free reign of the design decisions as long as I maintained the same color scheme and used the same logo on the site. So I make a fast draft in Fireworks, this was back when it was a Macromedia product, before the Adobe acquisition, and within two days I show him. He's not impressed and demands a different direction and sets up a list of demands. I, as always, aim to please the customer and do just what he wants. I design a new layout with his list of demands, but he doesn't like that either. That's how the next three months go. A never-ending circle where he is never happy with anything. Now close to four months into the project, he demands to see a working showcase of the back end. I point out that he himself changed the order in how the project was being done and had demanded that I do the front end design first instead of the back end as stated in the contract, which he now turns on me and says, yes, the contract we both signed says you will have a working back end to show me at the end of the month. If you don't honor that I will have to take my business elsewhere and seek compensation for your lack of professionalism. Okay, I now have 12 days to do a back end for the site. So I get a friend to help me and we work tirelessly through a weekend and I have a good base to work from in 9 days, mind you, at this point he has only paid the security on the contract, about 5% of the total price, and has shielded himself from paying by hiding behind, well, if you can't honor the contract, why should I? Finish XX work and then I'll pay as per the contract. Remembering now, all the warnings I had heard about this guy, I decide to add a special function to the code just to be safe, more on that later. So, now it's the end of the month, we have a front-end design he is okay with, a back-end that has been finished to about 85% of what is required according to the contract, and I still have one month left to finish everything else. Time for show and tell. Since I was working on this development, I was running it on my own dev server and showed him this in a browser on his computer. I mentioned to him that since I only had 512 quit slash s upstream from the server it might lag a little, but it wouldn't when it would be put on the productional server he has his website on at his hosting company. He says that's okay and the demonstration goes on. As I'm showing him the site, both front-end and back-end, I can see he's immensely happy with it, although he would never say so out loud. He is trying to hide his smile that pops up regularly, and his eyes gleam with all the added ways he can now start making money from. Anyway, he now says that it's way too slow, this is wrong, that is wrong. Blah blah blah. Client, I want you to put it up on my prod server and see how the speed is. 
Me, okay, no problem, I can make that happen. Please pay 50% of the contract, and I'll get right on it. Okay, I wait a few days, and then I get an email from him where he includes a forwarded message from the bank detailing a transaction from him to me to the amount of the 50% I asked for. So I push the system to his prod server so he can take a look at it, under beta.hisdomain.tld, I then send him an email stating that he can try the system with the supplied credentials. What he doesn't know is that I knew he had been fishing around for another programmer to do this project, to pick up from a lazy deadbeat who couldn't do anything right. So I knew he would most likely try to screw me. What I also suspected was that the email he sent me with the transaction proof was a fake, which it ended up being. Pro Revenge 1 Remember that small function I mentioned? Well, what it did was if user X, his user, tries to remove user Y, my admin, from the system without one setting being changed in the config first, the system will first delete and purge the database and then remove all the documents in the web route. Well, not five minutes after he reads the email from me, he does just that. He tries to delete my admin user from the system to lock me out. Guess who has nothing of the project left? He does. Pro Revenge 2 Since it is considered forgery to spoof an email, especially from a bank, I sent the information to the authorities and he goes under investigation by both the police and the bank lawyers. Pro Revenge 3 I sold the system to a competitor of his for a better price than originally contracted to him, and last I knew he was now blacklisted from owning a company as well as he lost his right to work as a lawyer. I only got that 5% he paid at the beginning and for working for just over 5 months on this project that is hardly anything. But the knowledge of his demise will keep my heart warm for the rest of my life. Bully my brother? Guess you won't know who blew up the toilet. This is not my story, but from my educational advisor, one of the legit funniest people I have ever met. The other day we were talking about our school times and the differences between being educators and students when she started telling this story. She used to be the model student, getting along with all the teachers and getting the best grades in her classroom, but there was that one teacher she could not get along with. It was her chemistry teacher, and she described her as all teachers have that breaking point where they just start screaming, but hers was incredibly easy to find. Until the point of the start of the story, she was just an unliked teacher and someone my advisor just dealt with. But one day, she reached her breaking point when her brother told me this teacher, which I'm gonna be calling her rude teacher, was calling him stupid and screaming at him for not knowing an answer she hadn't even explained properly yet. That was when she got involved in a plan, the famous toilet bomb. Because of the shared gender with the teacher, she knew where and when rude teacher would use the restroom, she had a strange routine with the exact time and stall she used to use, and because she is a model student, she could come and go without being even noticed, since no one would assume she was up to no good. Thing is, the whole class was in on it. Before she got involved with the plan though, there was a single condition, no one would rat or blame someone else. No one was supposed to talk anything. She had a plan. And to the toilet the bomb went. My advisor went to the stall, installed the toilet bomb, and went back to class at the exact time rude teacher had her restroom break. When she came back from doing the deed, she sits down at her desk and hears the explosion, followed by rude teacher screaming bloody murder and coming back to class to scream at them. The only classroom that was on break for teacher transition was my advisor's class, so rude teacher beeline straight to them and started demanding to know who did this. Of course, radio silence. She jumped in anger like a toddler, made all threats she could legally do, and made the biggest tantrum you could imagine, while being absolutely soaked in toilet water. Radio. Silence. The next logical step for rude teacher was to call the principal, that arrived at class with a box filled with pieces of paper. She explained that everyone was to write the name of someone involved in the toilet bomb and put there to be taken and read by her by the end of class. That was when my advisor stepped in. The second the principal was out of the class, she told everyone to just write it was me in capital letters and put the paper back in the box. Which everyone did. When the principal came back and started looking at the papers in front of the class, 
she slowly turned from a normal color to a deep, fiery red and started throwing her own tantrum, guess they found out her breaking point, and did the only thing she could do at that point. She suspended the whole goddamn class for three days. In the end, my advisor did everything, blew up the toilet, lead the class to not snitch on anyone and earn three days at home without no one suspecting anything. Stealing from locker, enjoy your trophy. One of recent posts here reminded of story from my father. English is not my mother tongue so please ignore mistakes in writing. He worked in a factory in Eastern Europe an event occurred somewhere in 1980s. I know how weird it looks now in 2020s, but at the time it was pretty common that workers in factory would come to work drunk or they would drink alcohol at work. My father was not much different and he would occasionally bring a bottle of brandy and keep it in his locker. These lockers were pretty easy to access without a key, you would need just a screwdriver or some piece of metal and door would be easily bent and returned to original afterwards. The factory was working in shifts and when you come next day, you would just notice that someone opened your locker and something is missing that you left inside a day earlier. As my father was bringing quite good booze it would be missing next day. After who knows how many times his booze was stolen, he had enough of it and he decided to set a trap for thief. The brandy he usually brought was color similar to whiskey, due to being matured in oak casks, and he took an empty bottle to the toilet and filled it with his urine and locked it back to his locker and went home after his shift was over. As shifts were slightly overlap, there was no break in factory process, next day when he would come to work, people from previous shift were still there. He came to his locker and noticed that bottle was completely missing. He came to the workspace and loudly asked if anyone knows what has happened to the bottle with urine from his locker. He said that he had to go to medical check as he might have some urinary infection and he had to bring morning urine, but he had forgotten it in his locker day earlier. One of guys turned red and started yelling at my father how he dared to leave urine in bottle labeled as brandy, that someone could have mistakenly drink it and get seriously sick. After that his locker was not robbed ever, and that guy have gotten new nickname a piss drinker.